Well, good morning, everyone. Welcome to this morning's study. Uh, before we begin, uh, can you join me in a word of prayer? Dear Father in heaven, we are grateful for the time that we have here this morning to open your word together. And we invite your spirit's presence in our hearts, in our lives. We ask, Lord, that you, you can teach us, that you can help us to see uh, the need around us, that we can minister to those who are in darkness. And we pray, Lord, that you can help us to see our need of you each day. Help us to depend upon you and thank you for the light that you have given us. Be with us now in this study. Be with each person. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, so I, I did send a, a file, two or two files. It's really the same file, one in PDF, one in PowerPoint. And um, that is, it's this file <clears throat> that we're working on. So um, we're going to be updating this, but I just thought some people might like to have it. They could look at it um, uh, in between studies. But yeah, I will... Uh, continue to send an updated version of this. So this is just the files that we have from the book of Judges. And uh, um, yeah, some people don't have PowerPoint. That's why I sent the PDF so we can look at those. But yeah, they'll continue continually be updated until we're done. So what we're doing right now is we're, we're going to go through uh, the Judges line and um, uh, deal with each of the judges individually and add some of the, the details, the information that uh, helps us understand these charts. Because I know it's one thing to have a chart with a bunch of dates, but then if you're not sure what those dates represent, it's not helpful. So let's just go through this judge's line and... Um, um, this one won't be very long to go through, and then we'll just continue going through these. I think that's how we're going to approach it for now. <clears throat> so what we see here, of course, is that the judge's line is the second angel arriving. That is, we believe that the judge's line is a zoom into the second angel's message arriving on this line that Jeff has. Now, when Jeff has the line and he has 9-11 as the second angel arriving, we've come to the conclusion that that's actually 11-9. That is, they are the same way mark, but two different lines. So um, I know we've gone through this many times before. Is any Can anybody sort of uh, explain how they understand it? So when we say that 9-11 and 11-9, 11-9-2019 are the same way, Mark, how are we, how are we understanding that? So we're saying the judge's line is to zoom into 9-11 as the second angel arriving. <clears throat> so um, what we determined in the past is that the um, we kept hearing these things about zooming in, zooming in, and I didn't understand it at all. But as we progressed through our understanding, um, it became more apparent that um, the books telling stories becomes a line, and in that in that story, you could have references to a another line um and that being like another prof prophetic line or another line that we like in the judges we found we decided we were going through the judges and and one of the judges was um a certain event that happened uh those three other judges was another event that happened um and, and as far as 
the zooming in portion is, is, well, we had um, the line of, what was it, Ehud, um, and those guys, or those two other, there was two other fellows. Um, that was a whole line of information. And in that line of information, we had seven way marks. And those way marks um, kept showing up again and again in different lines of judges, but they were in different positions in the judges, uh, which we determined through how they looked to us as answering the seven way mark template that we had. It, 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 is, is that a good enough explanation for you or? Okay. Um, yeah. So yeah, that, that's a good way of explaining it. I mean, everybody would sort of explain it differently. I mean, I know how I explain things. Yeah, 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 exactly. But, um, so uh, I'm just going to add a slide here. So just insert slide. Okay. And so I'm just going to put the line up here of, of what, what we would call uh, Jeff's line though it's a little bit modified. But this is what we've come to understand, is that we have, uh, in 1989, we're going to have this time of the end. So that's, that's 11.989, right? And that's the first angel arriving. And then 1996 is the formalization with the publication of the time of the end magazine. And then 9.11 is the empowerment of the first angel. Now, Jeff, when he marked 9-11 as the arrival of the second angel, was he wrong? So he marked it as the empowerment of the first and the arrival of the second. So was he wrong? No. No. So he's not wrong, but he doesn't realize that what he has done is created a new line right and that line we is is typified by the line of the judges so when we look at 11 9 there because he would normally have 9 11 there again right if you, if we're going to draw each of the the seven way marks in the line the second angel arriving would be 9-11, not 11-9. But we're saying that 11-9 is, um, is really what Jeff was looking at prior to 11-9 happening. So, so we could still call it 9-11 if we wanted to, but it's actually this line of the judges that we're seeing here is this zoom into 9-11 as the arrival of the second angel or really into 11-9 as the arrival of the second angel. But it begins at 9-11, right? So when he was recognizing 9-11 as the arrival of the second angel, he was actually looking at this line. So we can say, see that this line is really representing the line of the judges. And so that 9-11 and 11-9 are really the same way mark. But we've just zoomed into 9-11. And so we're saying that it's 11-9. Even though it does start with 9-11, its focus is going to be this empowerment of this first message. So if we think of this as a zoom into 9-11, it's going to be empowered at 11-9. Right? Now, of course, it's going to have these Correct. other three marks as well. So that what Jeff didn't recognize is that when he saw this event that first was the empowerment of the first angel's message, he was actually seeing the start of this line, but had not recognized this. And, and we can see how that this first part of this judge's line where we have Othniel, Ehud, and Shamgar, 
I mean, that's going to be the Holy Spirit. It's going to be this work that is going to be done in connection with understanding 9-11 itself. And it's going to lead to uh, this structural chiasm that, that we call the Levitical chiasm. We're here, we're marking two dates, October 13th, 2018, and September 7th, 2019. They sort of embody that period of time. That's a period of 329 days, right? So that's from, uh, that's the date, of course, the first date from when I measured the 391 and a half days to 11.9. And then the next date is the 63 days to 11.9. And of course, when we start to zoom into these waymarks, we see the details of what, what these waymarks are about, right? But this first line, or this, this line of the judges, this first way mark, 9-11, when we look at the next line, that's going to be Ehud, uh, Othniel, Ehud, and Shamgar, right? It's going to be this work of these three judges that are three messages. And so we look at these and can say, well, this is what's represented at 9-11, in that line of the judges. So we're stepping down these tiers. We have Ellen White's big line, which has the Sunday law. And then from, from that, we zoom into this line, which is basically Jeff's main line, except that Jeff would have seen 11.9 as 9.11, but they're the same way, Mark. Right? They're just... You know, because eleven nine is nine eleven, but it's nine eleven as the. He arrival. just hadn't recognized it at that point. It took us a while to see that. Well, and, and it wasn't possible for us to see it earlier because we we would not have had any conception of, you know, especially before we even had the date eleven nine, right? We wouldn't have been able to see it. Um, but that become comes as a result of. Um, passing through the history. So once we get past December 25th, 2021, and we begin this intensive study of understanding the lines, then we start to come to this of the connection between 9-11 and November 9th, 2019, right? So, but the thing is, this is Jeff's line. It's, it's Jeff's line as we can see it now, Jeff wouldn't have seen it completely as this way. The, the only difference would be it would be two 9-11s, right? But he'd still have Midnight, Midnight Cry, Sunday Law. <clears throat> so, so the line of the judges is a step down just on this center waymark. That's the waymark that we are in right now. That is... We're not at midnight. And I don't believe that we have any time information that can tell us when midnight is. So um, on Saturday night, I was at Colin's study, and, and he believes that we've, we've passed midnight. He believes that that's January 6th, um, uh, 20, uh, 21 right? So the siege of Washington. And it is, but that's on a different line, right? It's one of the, the lines that, that shows up in these lines of the judges. So, so we can't really mark that here as on this line, we can't mark January 6, 2021 as raffia, right? This this is a raffia that's future, right? So when we look at this midnight, I mean, we have lots of ways we could understand it, right? But it's it's raffia, right? And this midnight cry is paneum. At least that's how we understand it so far. But these are these way marks that Jeff, when when we started to understand raffia and paneum. And we mark them as midnight in the midnight cry. 
we were marking them in a line that's lower down than this, right? And that is, we have all of these lines where we have midnight and the midnight cry. But those are lines below this. Um, it's actually even much more below this. It would be two tiers down because when we when we zoom into this line, we're actually zooming into the second angel. We have this line. This is the line of the judges. This is a zoom into the second angel arriving. And so all of this line represents events that occur prior to midnight. So, so since these are events that are prior to midnight, at least up to January 11th, 2023, these are events that are prior to midnight. We can't say that midnight on Jeff's line arrived. But midnight has arrived. Um, I mean, here, if you're going to look at midnight, midnight is December 25th, 2021 on this line of the judges, right? That's the second angel was empowered. Or that's not midnight, midnight cry, right? And December 6th, 2020 was midnight. That's going to be represented by Jephthah, right? And in this line, it does have a second angel arriving as well. But that second angel arrives on July 18, 2020. Right. And then we even have in this line, Jotham, who represents a, a specific message that's going to be attacked. And it's going to be, you know, invited back. Right. But ultimately, the message of Jotham is... Uh, uh, well, wait, that's I'm getting mixed up. So Jotham is, yeah, that's the 70th week. That's going to be that son of, of Gideon, right? So he's not the one that's invited back, but he's he's going to give a message. And, and that's going to be connected to, so we'll see that when we get into it again. Um, but you can see now, then when we get to something like Gideon, Gideon is now a waymark in a line. That, that is marked as a 11, 11, 9, right? And that's going to be representing this battle between Parminder's message and our message. And the 300 that are left are going to be proclaiming uh, July 18, 2020, right? So, so when we then step down here to the next level, we can see we have Sister White's line is above that. Then we have Jeff's line, and then we have the second angel arriving in Jeff's line being 11.9. And we zoom into that, and we get the line of the judges. And then we zoom into the first way marked on the line of the judges, and this is uh, a line that rep is represented. First, we're going to have the line with Othniel, Ehud, and Shamgar as representing the first, second, and third angels' messages. But Ehud is going to have a line as well as Othniel, and as well as Shamgar. Now, I don't have Othniel's line drawn out. Um, so we're going to have to uh, do that again. Now, um, and, and we have to, so there's some things that we kind of left undone. I think we sort of had talked about it, but we I didn't end up drawing it out. I might have drawn it out on the whiteboard. Mm -hmm. So I would have to go back and look at old videos. But it, is this making sense now? Is this a little clearer to people as we look at this? I mean, I know the people here pretty much have gone through this. We've gone through this for a while, so it should make sense to us. Now, people who might be watching this video and hadn't watched some of the other videos, um, if they have questions about it, they can always write a note in the video or ask a question or they can make a comment. Um, so definitely I welcome people to make comments on the videos. So when we look at Othniel, Ehud, and Shamgar, we can see that these are going to, to relate to messages that have to do with what? So what is Othniel, Ehud, and Shamgar um, as a whole, as a line, what is it addressing?
So, so remember, the line of the judges is a zoom into the second angel's message as being uh, 9-11, right? But really, when, when we do that, when we zoom in into being 9-11 as the empowerment of the second angel, it's also representing 11.9, but it does have 9.11 to it because 9.11 and 11.9 are connected. So Othniel, Ehud, and Shamgar are that first way mark on the line of the judges. And it is the way mark of September 11th, 2001. But you're going to see that this line of Othniel, Ehud, and Shamgar together as a line is going to bring us to October 22. 2014, right? So this whole line of Othniel, Ehud, and Shamgar are addressing what point? So there's a darkness there. And what is this darkness? And why do we end up on October 22, 2014? Mm. We just went over this too, and I can't remember. <laughs> I don't remember things this way. Okay. I'm more visual. Okay. Well, so so what we have is we have the Seventh Day Adventist Church at 9/11. Now we know 9/11. There's the empowerment of the first angel, and and with the understanding of the empowerment of the first angel, um. We don't generally have a close of probation at the empowerment. We have the close of probation at the arrival of a message, right? Of the, the arrival of the second angel marks the close of probation for the first group. But 9-11 has two purposes. So it, it, it does serve as the arrival of the second angel. So we're not saying it doesn't. It's just when it does, we're looking at a line um, differently, right? We're looking at two different lines. So the church has a an understanding that um, this movement has inherited, let's say, right? Uh, yes. Yeah. And so the way that I looked at it before, when we, when we went through examining the foundation, we looked at Jeff's initial studies prior to 9-11, his, his movement was focused upon, he was like every other conservative Adventist. He was focused upon the Adventist church. He could see the apostasy in the church, but he doesn't have in his mind that the church is going to be passed by or anything like that, right? Yes, correct. Because he's a Seventh-day Adventist and, you know, he's, he's, conservative Seventh-day Adventist. He has some new light, um, but that new light hasn't led him to the conclusions that he's going to have later on. And so as light comes to Jeff, there's going to be people who drop away because they're, they're going to see the direction that FFA is going, that, that somehow what we're doing in repeating Millerite history is drawing us away from that group that's being tested, which is the Seventh-day Adventist Church prior to 9-11, right? So the Seventh-day Adventist organization is, is given a message that arrives in 1989, and by 2001, it's going to reject that message, right? So when it rejects that message, that's its close of probation. That is the arrival of the second angel, and that's one of the things that Jeff saw as he saw that 9-11 was an arrival of the second angel. When he first saw the empowerment of the first angel, he wasn't seeing that the Seventh-day Adventist church was being passed by, right? If, if you remember the studies we did on that. But by the time he understands it's the arrival of the second angel, and, and does anybody know exactly when Jeff was disfellowshipped, by the way? Because he, he had had his membership in the conference, and he ended up being disfellowshipped. And if somebody knows the answer to that, I would I would want to know that. That might be a question for Pat Rampey. Well, no, it wouldn't be. 
Okay. It was, it was fairly recent. Hmm. It, it, he wasn't disfellowshipped a long, long time ago. He was disfellowshipped like 2015 or 2016 in there. I just don't know the, the date. Um, I think it was 2000, like early 2016 or something like that, but it could have been late 2015. So I'm just at, Either either Pat or possibly Daniel Fontenot then, because I don't remember him ever speaking of his being disfellowshipped. Yeah, well, I remember when it happened. So um, so I have here, um, just looking at some of my old emails, but don't have the date here. Um, so that one doesn't have it. Yeah, it would be in my old email, which I don't have anymore. Let's see. Um, yeah, Pat might know, but um, I know I can find it. It's I, I'm pretty sure it's in my email because it's, it's okay. So anyway, um, the reason why I, I, I'm interested in that, of course, it might be a date that we could put in our lines, but. Um, it, it's something that's going to happen that is in um, so the Jeff is still a part of the Adventist church all through this history here that we have in this, this line of Othniel, Ehud, and Shandar. And um, but this is this is moving towards uh a separation from the church that that's going to happen. So when Jeff is disfellowshipped, I think it's, it's symbolic of the separation of this movement from the church. Um, but we know that, that this happens at nine 11, right? I mean, it, it symbolically occurs, but it takes time as a message to progress. But that's part of the problem that we have with um, with this movement at 9-11. At 9-11, when the second angel arrives, um, we, we see that this movement is, is still connected to the church. But it's there's many people that are going to start to separate from Jeff, following Jeff, because of the church's stance towards him even probably more than Jeff's stance towards the church, right? Because people are faithful Seventh-day Adventists. They believe in the church. Even if they see the church as an apostasy, they don't want to separate from the church. And so this, this has existed in our movement. It's a struggle, you know, all of us have probably had on some level or other, um, and some more, depending how how intertwined socially with the church and and you know how much family is with the church all of those types of things um but here in this line what we're going to be marking is light that relates to uh understanding first 9 11 right so that's going to be the ozone camp meeting and uh, the oklahoma camp meeting and and that part of that understanding of 9 11 is um especially in its empowerment, is this first, uh, this separation that ends up happening in this movement. So this movement is united. And there's, so we really need to go to the verses, uh, why we chose some of these dates. So let's go to Judges, because we, we really need to get these things um, well, well grounded in, because, you know, we can say, well, that's Othniel. But what are the verses, what were the symbols 
that led us there. And so one of the things we didn't do with these lines initially is write in what verses are being represented. Okay, so when we look at Judges chapter 3, it's going to talk at first about um, these nations which the Lord left to prove them. So these are things that uh, talk doctrines, messages that have been left, that is our movement hadn't defeated those prior to 9-11, right? And those are going to be left in the movement and they're going to have to be conquered and they're conquered by judges and the judges represent messages. So it's going to say, um, uh, uh, only that the generations of the children of Israel might know to teach them war, at least such as before knew nothing thereof, namely five lords of the Philistines and all the Canaanites and the Sidonians and the Hivites that dwelt in Mount Lebanon from Mount Baal Hermon unto the entering in of Ham Hamath. They were to prove Israel by them to know whether they would hearken unto the commandments of the Lord which he commanded their fathers by the hand of Moses. And the children of Israel dwelt among the Canaanites, Hittites, Amorites, Perizzites, Hivites, and Jebusites. And they took their daughters to be their wives and gave their daughters to their sons and served their gods. So this is this situation that we have in the period of the judges. And now when it says that um, only that the generations of the children of Israel might know to teach them war at the least such as before knew nothing thereof. So what does it mean that they didn't, um, they needed to be taught war in this context of how we're interpreting this? Because they need to fight against these enemies and what, what, it, what, what is the weapons of their warfare? Miller's rules. So this is how to study the Bible. So can we say that God allowed um, false doctrines to enter into the church so that we would learn to study God's word? Ellen White actually plainly says this. So uh, I can't remember how how the, the statement where it is, but she says this, right? that God allows heresies to come in so that we will have to study because we didn't know war. So do Seventh-day Adventists understand how to study? Do they understand war? No. Were they there when these doctrines were developed in, you know, in the past? They weren't. They what don't do have mean? experience. What do you mean? Well, they weren't there at the Millerite history, were they? No, right? no. You have to study that to yeah, find so that out. The, yeah, so we're in the fourth generation, and we take for granted these doctrines uh, that we hardly even value, that we criticize, that we don't even really understand the context of why we believe those things, and that, and that we just undermine them by... Um, you know, finding fault with our doctrines because who finds fault with them? The Protestants, right? And so we think that if we can make the Protestants uh, have less, if the Protestants have less problems with our doctrines, then we can reach them, right? And so what ends up happening, their sons and their daughters become wives or their daughters become wives, right? And their daughters, and they gave their daughters to their sons and served their gods. So, if we we look at daughters, these represent churches. So, do the churches of Adventism are they given over to these pagan gods, pagan nations? That's what happens, and that happens at nine eleven spiritual formation, right in September of two thousand and one. So this is the condition of the church when Othniel arrives. Okay? And we know that Othniel is um, a younger brother of Caleb, right? Yes, yes. So we looked at that. 
And, and so we know the children of Israel did evil in the sight of the Lord, forgot the Lord their God, so and served Balaam and the groves. So, so we can see here what's being described in these, these verses here are the condition of the church at 9-11, because the first, first angel's message has been rejected. But we're zooming into this waymark, the arrival of the second angel, with this line of the judges. And the first, first judge is going to be Othniel. So he's going to go back to 9-11, and we're saying that Othniel represents the Holy Spirit. Why did we say that? So we're going to have Othniel. His name means the force of God. It's based upon um, a prophetic message, right? Because it's the lion of God. And it's the lion of the tribe of Judah that opens the book, right? Now, in our history, of course, it's it's not specifically specifically the book of Daniel. In our history, the line of the tribe of Judah is going to unseal the seven thunders. So this is a work of the Holy Spirit that needs to be done, right? It's the force or the power of God. Okay, so anything more that we could do to... Uh, to place this, uh, I mean, we're going we're gonna to take these verse, verses, and if we're going to go back to our chart then, um, we would just simply say this darkness, this is represented by uh, Judges 3, verse 1 to 6. Right, so we can just put that there. Okay. So we can see that darkness, and that darkness is the false doctrines of Protestantism that have infected Adventism that we have to overcome. So, so now we're going to place Othniel at 9-11. It's, his name means the force of God. So we could probably put these types of things in here as a reference. Let's just say Lion of God. It's more literal um, in that sense. Okay, so we got this Lion of God. How else can we place Othniel at 9-11? Okay, so when we look at the enemy that specifically uh, he is fighting against, Kushran Rishathaim, right? King of Mesopotamia. So this is, is Babylon, right? And so in this period of time, Israel is going to have this eight years in which it's... Um, they're sold into the hand of the king of Mesopotamia. God sells them into the hand of Cush Rashiathiam, king of Mesopotamia. And they're going to serve him for eight years. So, so we have this oppression. How does this help us place this at 9-11? So remember, we had, he's twice wicked, Kushan, right? That's what Reshathai means, twice. Twice wicked, wicked Kushan. It's the two rivers. So let's 
try to right because Mesopotamia is the land of two rivers right okay so how does that relate to placing this at 9-11 so one is we would say that you know Jeff has a message that is the message of the two rivers that's going to be in 1996 You know, the Euphrates and the and the Tigris. So it's going to relate to the visions of of Daniel. Now Jeff um, mistakenly believes that uh, the U lie and the Hittical, Hittical being the Tigris, are you know that the U lies referring to the Euphrates. And so he ties Daniel's visions together, but it still is dealing with this message about Babylon, Mesopotamia. So how does this help us with 9-11? Because we're saying that this is leading us to 9-11. This enemy precedes 9-11. So we could probably even uh, put all of this, these verses, um, maybe up to number eight as so judges three verse one to eight because in verse nine they're going to cry unto the lord but how does this lead us to 9 11 we talked about spiritual formation right and so the church is involved in this darkness, and when they're involved in the darkness, the United States is attacked by Islam, marking the beginning of the third world. Now, that is the empowerment of the first angel's message, right? So it occurs at 9-11. But another message arrives as well at 9-11, that is the second angel's message. But it's still going to be developed, right? That is, that second angel's message is going to be developed. And we're looking at it as the line of the judges. So what are the symbols here? Nobody has any? No, there are eight years. I was thinking, thinking of, of, of Waco. Two and, and then there would be eight years till 2001. And I did hear an SDA pastor speak very disparagingly of, 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 of David Korach's group. And I thought, okay, maybe they don't agree, but why is he actually fomenting more hatred and violence against these people? You know, I was appalled when I heard his talk. So okay. 93 to 2001, could that have, could that fit in there with the eight years too? Okay. So so what we would do is we would take um, April 19th, 1993, right? I mean, we could yeah, mark. Yeah, I think that. Was, right. I mean, we could mark. We I'm could trying, mark. I'm trying to remember. It's been a long time. Yeah, because we have February 26th as well with the attack, the first attack on the World Trade Center. And then you're going to have. Yep. So here, I'm just going to go here see we, we forget these things we've gone through this quite a long time ago so i know it's i'm really dis disappointed in my own brain not being able to retain everything but well, i can't I remember. so much information okay so so we have this and we know there's um it's it's on february it's, it's february 28th right that that the atf occurs is it on the Sunday or is it on the Monday? Is it on the 29th? I know it's 50 days, but whether it was 50 cardinal or 50 or I think was the, was it the 28th was the first attack? There were a couple of attacks, at least a couple. Because what you have is the ATF attack. If so if somebody knows that, I mean I could look it up, but are we uh, talking about the Koresh incident or yeah? Okay. Yeah. I even have a film on that somewhere in storage. Yeah. Anyway, you just look it up on Wikipedia. Somebody can look it up. So I think it's it's okay. it, 
it's the sixth day of the 12th month. It's, we got a one, two, six there if it's February 28th. Um, it could have been February 29th. I, I can't remember. I, I, know, I know it was in April. <laughs> April when they burnt it down. We're talking about the ATF attack. That's what I'm talking about. That's in February. Yeah. So now, so we we have an attack on the World Trade Center that occurs on February 26th, right? So the World Trade Center, we have the bombing of the World Trade Center. Okay. And then you have the Waco attack, which I believe is the 28th. So somebody can find that and correct me if I'm wrong. Heidi says it's the 28th. Okay. Yeah. So that that that's, you know, two days later, three days if you count inclusively, right? And then 50 days. February 28th for sure. Yeah. And, and April 19th. Yeah. Yeah. Was the yeah. best. Yeah. We already established that. So, yeah. So that's when they're going to. So, so we have a, a way mark there. Um, so first we have this first attack on the World Trade Center. So this attack on the World Trade Center connects us to 2001, right? We can agree to that, that these two attacks on the World Trade Center are connected, right? We, I don't think we have to, um, you know, prove that point. Now that's going to be uh, 3,119 days after the first attack. So the first attack on the World Trade Center. And it's going to be followed by this Waco event. And that Waco event has these symbols. The first off is it's the sixth day of the 12th month. So that's a 12, a one, two, six. And then we're going to have the symbol for the first day of the first month, April 19th. And so can we just say that that eight years represents from this history to September 11th? Kind of makes sense there. Okay, right. So so we can connect this. So when we deal with these eight years, and we're going to put this on these lines. Here. Um, this, this period of eight years, we're going to say from 93 to... From 1993 to 2001. So that's how we're going to address that. Okay, so that helps bring us to 9 11, doesn't it? Yes. Okay. And, um, and then we have, um, I know there are some other things that I can't remember. Remember what that was. Well, one of the things is this doubling the twice wicked Kushan, right? Um, so the idea of of Kushan. Is, I, I don't know. If, I'm sorry, if you know, I don't know if you, if uh, Ruby Ridge got anything to do with it too. Okay, I don't, I don't know what you said at all. Ruby Ridge. It was Ruby. where um, the ATF went in and killed his wife and children. Yeah. Randy. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I just don't think that's relevant. I know, I know that it's, it, it just doesn't fit in with this line because that's. Okay. I, I, just, know, I understand uh, Ruby Ridge. I just don't think that Ruby Ridge is relevant. Yeah, was that person an Adventist? No, I didn't think so. But it is something that um, you know people were upset about, and they you know they connected these the fact that you know Waco happened and Ruby Ridge happened, and by the were, same department, by the same uh, organization from the yeah, field office. Yeah, and and you know and maybe that's somewhere a zoom into we could take into the account of what happened, and you could have the bombing of Oklahoma City at Oklahoma City as well, 
of the the the, the offices there, whatever it was called. The, the federal building. Federal the ATF was in there. <laughs> right, and that's yeah, gonna, pure, gonna pure. be on an anniversary because that's gonna happen April 19th, I think a year later. Two years. Well, was two years later. Two, two years later? Okay. Right. Yeah, because it yeah, so so there was a lot of anger going on regarding Waco amongst uh, conservative Adventists and conservative Christians about what had happened because um, I knew people who were upset about it personally. So, um, and uh, yeah, so so that's part of that history, but it just doesn't fit here with this uh, this date. So, uh, so we can take the 93 to 2001. Primarily, what we're marking here is February 26th, 2000, or, or 1993 to September 11th, 2001, because it's the World Trade Center that, that's really marking that. Now, we know the World Trade Center was bombed, and it's followed by Waco. That becomes a type that relates us to 9-11. So back in 2000, 2014... Um, there was a brother from, uh, well, I guess Australia, but I mean, he was in Thailand as well. And Larry, I, I can't think of his last name offhand, but he was teaching that 1993 was actually 9-11. That is, that we should look at 1993 as the attack on the United States by Islam. But he didn't accept that 9-11 was an attack by Islam. Right. So conspiracy so, theorist yeah conspiracy theorist and he really tried to urge jeff to for quite a few years to abandon 9 11 and to look at 1993 but of course all the symbols point to 9 11 now 1993 is tied to 9 11 because of this this eight year period as we see here in the book of judges but i spent a lot of time looking at this 1993 date um and uh, communicating with him, this Larry, Brother Larry. He, and, you know, and after, um, I can't, I'm trying to think when it was. For there was a while there, just like after September 7th, 2019, he was communicating with Jeff again. You know, there was a lot of people saying Jeff needs to abandon this November 9th time setting date and definitely didn't want Jeff to accept the July 18, 2020 date. Right. Um, and uh, so he was one of them. So he had, he had, I guess, had some influence. He wasn't a, a minor person. You know, he wasn't a nobody. But, um, but anyway, the point is 1993. I saw it as significant, that it was a foreshadowing of 9-11. And um, so, so it's definitely significant that we have these eight years here in this period of darkness from 1993 to 2001. So I don't think we could just dismiss those eight years. <clears throat> because the church, in a sense, is being warned with this event in 1993. Now, it's also in 1993 that Jeff first publishes his, his study on the lines, right? Prophetic lines, I think it's called. Now, we never mark that as the formalization of the message, but it's very similar to Miller's first preaching and his receiving credentials, you know, so from... 1330 or 1831 to 1833 you sort of have this span of time and and we see that with jeff from 1993 to 1996 but we also have the fact that you know he's publishing these prophetic lines and he's beginning to preach this message but it's during this period of eight years from the attack on the world trade center until uh, like the bombing on the world trade center till till 9 11. Now, as far as it being, because um, there's a specific number of days there, which is 
uh, 3119, what would be the significance of that? So there's 3,119 days between these two attacks on the World Trade Center. Now, 3119 is the 444th prime number. So it is a prime number. 444? Four, four. Yeah. But, you know, the 391, right? You can see the 391 in there. You know, 3119, it's got two ones, but. You can see it has those those digits, the 391. Um, now 444, it's in 444 BC that you're going to have uh, the story of Nehemiah. Right. Now, not trying to interrupt, but you have 3119 is the number yeah. you're addressing. Yeah. If you reverse that, you come up with 9113. Right? Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So, is this symbolically 911 to the three woes? Okay. Yeah. So, you could put the three woes, right? And, and that's the third woe being 911. Right. The Europeans call it 11 9. You know, well, so. it's, it's interesting that Iran and I had the same thought at about the same time. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So you can. See, yes. Possibly. Yeah. Oh, when when two people see the same thing at the same time, Jeff and I both figured out the four, um, uh, uh, the four seven times of a week before the camp meeting in two thousand fourteen or two thousand. 13, and we both present the same topic. Um, when I'd figured out the 2,604 days of the prophetic mirror, Colin had figured it out that same week. So, um, so yeah, uh, this 3111. Two witnesses? Yeah, at the mouth of two or three witnesses, yep. So that's, that's how I take that. So, yes, yeah, so we can see it's the third woe, and it's 11-9. It's but it's also 9-11. And that ties in with what we're saying about these lines. Okay. Yes, to understand. Yeah. Sorry about the black screen there. It's just I'm using the calculator, so it does that. Um, Okay, so so I think that helps establish that um, Othniel is marking 9-11. Okay, so that should be pretty clear. Now, we have an increase of knowledge. And then we're going to have this ozone camp meeting. Now, the ozone camp meeting is just where we get this understanding of 9-11. Right, the initial understanding that it is the third woe, right? We don't have it as the arrival of the second angel's message yet. Right? But we, we have that it's the third woe. And then what we did is we took um, the Oklahoma camp meeting, which began on November 7th and ended November 14th. But we're going to have the empowerment of that message. And the way that we address that, how did we... How did we see this Oklahoma camp meeting? Um, what is the connection here with the ozone camp meeting? So the ozone camp meeting is this formalization. And what happens in Oklahoma that we would have as this? Um, and, and is there anything that we can connect this ozone camp meeting to 2004 in the verses themselves? So... 
because we're saying this is all under auth Neil. So, you know, this message arrives at 9-11, but we still have this battle that goes on. So when the children of Israel cried unto the Lord, the Lord raised up a deliverer to the children of Israel who delivered them, even Othniel, the son of Kenaz, Caleb's younger brother. And the spirit of the Lord came upon him and he judged Israel and went out to war. And the Lord delivered Cushan Rishathaim, king of Mesopotamia, into his hand, and his hand prevailed against Cushan Rishathaim. Right. And the land's going to have rest 40 years, and Othniel, the son of Kenaz, died. So can, can we take these any of these verses and use them to represent the ozone camp meeting? Anything. What What can we do here? Are we just randomly putting up that it's the ozone camp meeting and, you know, the Oklahoma camp meeting? Is there some other way? What was the date again? Uh, never mind. I see it. Yeah. Yeah. So, well, for ozone, we just have 2004. We don't, we don't on this chart have an exact date. And um, and I know we tried finding it, but I don't know why we don't have an exact date. You would think it would be something that could be found. Um, Anybody have any thoughts on that? We know it's at the end of 2004. November of 2004. But that's as far as we get, Iran. We don't have a... I don't recall specific dates, just I do know the month. Yeah, you know, you think it would be in the their uh oh wow, the screen went really blank there. Uh, I'm just searching right now, so if I can find more. Yeah, it just doesn't seem to show up in the FFA, you know, like the future news uh, newsletters. <clears throat> um, but we do have um, uh, the span of time between uh, that camp meeting there. So you're going to have <coughs> in Oklahoma in 2010. Eleven four, just like four one one info. So we got November fourth. Is that what you're saying? It's in November fourth, or it's just eleven four, like in two thousand four. Okay. Now, um, so we had some significance with. with uh, so let's leave ozone for now. But when we look at Oklahoma, what's the significance there? So it's going to be 2010, November 7th. Oh, that's Jeff's birthday. Right. So it's Jeff's birthday. How old is Jeff on that date when I first meet him? Was he 56? 
Um, Can't remember his birth year. He's born in, is he born in 45? I guess he, he was born in 55? No, I think he was born in 52. 52. Well, whatever. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, that's it's 50. Let me see. In 2016, he turned 65. Okay, so then he was born in 51. Yeah, he's born in 51. So he would have been 53 in 04. Okay. And Iran says when he said November, he was thinking of Oklahoma, not Ozo. But I'm pretty sure it's it's in that period of time. Um, just exactly when, I don't know. Now, um, so I meet Jeff on his birthday in 2010 at the Oklahoma camp meeting. So that's November, November 7th. And uh, it's going to go to the 14th. So there's that week in there um now it's 3344 days from uh 9 11 that i meet jeff Three thousand. 344 days. I don't know what the significance of that is. But anyway, that's that's the span of time. I don't know of any significance in it, um, in that number. Okay. So can we take, uh, um, can we connect this to these verses in any way? Because remember, this is a message, right? So this message is going to be empowered. And I say it's empowered on November 7th, 2010. Now, of course, that refers to this camp meeting, but it's the first camp meeting that I'm at. Right? So I arrive there on November 7th. I meet Jeff and Kathy that evening. Uh, before Jeff speaks, he's going to do the first message. Can we take these verses? Can we just say it's three verse 10 represents 2010 or something? Or what do, what do we have to connect it? So is there a message that we can mark at? So one of the things is we see Judges 3 verse 9 says he raised up a deliverer, right? And Judges 3.10 says the spirit of the Lord came upon him. 
So we can see that this is a formalization and empowerment of a message, right? That's what it looks like. Okay. So, so we have a message that comes at 9-11, right? And we're going to have this deliver raised up. So from 9-11 to 2004, this is a message relating to 9-11, right? It's a response to 9-11. And, and, and that has to be 2004, right? Because that's when the message of 9-11 comes. Now, in 2010, how is it the Spirit of the Lord comes upon him? So maybe I'm making this too personal, but from the fact that I end, I'm at that camp meeting and we see this working of the Holy Spirit um, that comes as a result of understanding 9-11. That is, we have 9-11, we have understood it. When we get to the 2010 camp meeting, there is something, um, God brings something to the message, right? And we could say it brings me to the message, but in bringing me to the message, this is actually God's work, right? That is, we could not see the message develop in the way that it developed without that addition of that chronology. Now, God could have used anybody to do that, right? Right. But in this case, he, he just chose me. But it's not me. It's the message of chronology that's going to come as a result of that. Yeah, because these are messages. This isn't necessarily, but people are attached to the messages. Right. But, you know, so it's not about me. I'm not, you know, the person that empowers the first message in this line. Right. It's just that at that camp, I meet Jeff and that combination of me and Jeff meeting um, leads to um, this arrival of this message, the second message. So we're going to say the second message is the end of the camp meeting. Right. That's at least that's how we've drawn it out, whether that's correct or not. But that becomes my understanding of that camp meeting on November 14th. So so I arrive there, right? Jeff and I meet, but it's not going to be till the last day of the camp meeting that I'm impressed with with Jeff. And is prior to that, I don't know what they're talking about. But <laughs> There I become impressed with this message. And so that's November 14th. It's interesting. It was seven days long. Yeah, well, eight days if you count it inclusive. They're inclusive. But, yeah. but it's a week. You know, they started on Sunday and they ended on Sunday. You know, they didn't end on Sabbath. There was a me the messages on Sunday morning. Right. Then that's yeah. even more interesting that it's eight days. Yeah. Okay. A day for a year. But um, and, and that's then we're, what I was thinking. Yeah. So then we have, so we have this message arrive, and then we're going to have Newport, um, the two tables, and Arkansas, two thousand fourteen. So this second message that arrives is going to, um be formalized um, with the disfellowshipping at Newport? Or is that Jeff presenting at Newport? I think that's Jeff presenting at Newport, if I remember. Right. And he's going to make this connection between Newport. Um, Newport, uh, which um, state? Newport. Um, that wasn't Rhode Island. It was um, Oregon, wasn't it, or something like that? No, it's going to end in Oregon, the second one. So just like we have the Portland, uh, um, Maine, and Portland, Oregon, we're going to have Newport and then Newport, Washington. I just can't remember which Newport. Rhode is. Island. It's not Rhode Island. Oh, okay. Because that's what I always thought it was, Rhode Island, and I found I was wrong. Um, uh, so um, 
me see. Yeah, Newport, Rhode Island is is the the famous one. It's in the spirit of prophecy. So there's Newport, Arkansas. There's Newport, California. There's Newport Beach, California. Newport, Delaware. Newport, Florida. Newport, Georgia. Newport, Illinois, and Newport, New Indiana. Hampshire. New Hampshire. It's Newport, New Hampshire. Okay. And and that's going to be where the charts, the 1863 chart, is going to first be presented, right? Which, so so Jeff connected this um, 1863 with this these two new ports, and then the disfellowshipping that occurs. Yeah, so Newport, New Hampshire. But he's going to be speaking at Newport, Washington. Right, and then we have the two tables, June 22nd. So now this is going to be the message of Ehud, right? So the first one was in Othniel, Oth, you know, Othniel being uh, the judge and this symboling this symbolizing this message. So um, when we look at Ehud, this is going to be about Eglon, king of Moab. Now, um, so it's going to be against the Moabites and the children of Ammon and Amalek, the Amalekites. Now it says the Lord strengthened Eglon, king of Moab, the king of Moab, against Israel because they had done evil in the sight of the Lord. So this is going to be after a period of 40 years, you know, in this, this story. Um, so in our lines, we're just taking it as, you know, there's this period of time, you know, would be eight days or something. But um, so the, the children of Israel served Eglon, the king of Moab, 18 years. So it's going to be 18 years. So you're going to have um, the eight years, and you're going to have 40 years, and then you're going to have 18 years, right, if we take this whole line. So how does this relate? The Moabites, what kind of enemy is this? Angela says Leviticus 26, verse 16 and 17. So those are those are dealing with the curses. For the incestuous son Moab was. Okay. I remember that you and then I you know looked at the word and I remember us discussing this. The son of Lot. Okay. Yeah, son of Lot. Right, so he's descended from Lot. Okay, so how would this relate to this this message that we're um, we're placing on our line? So we're saying that this is um, Ehud would arrive. This message of Ehud arrives on November fourteenth, two thousand ten. That's what we put. Whether that's correct or not, right? Um, we had a re reasons when we did this initially but <clears throat> so what is this message so what is the message that was testing this movement and what message arrives that's then going to test the movement again so um if we look at the line at Yehud, it was the 2520 that arrived first angel's message right that's what we that's right what we walked <laughs> yeah. through it before yeah, so so that's why we need this line of Ehud that we have, 
because that's how we understand what was understood. So for me, I'm introduced to the 2520 at this camp meeting, right? So the 2520 has been around. Um, and, and when we look at this uh, line here, we, we're going to see that the 2520 arrives um, in the line of Ehud. So, so we're going to put this, well, when does it arrive? It, it, it doesn't arrive in 2010. It arrives earlier. This line looks kind of almost like it, we didn't really finish it, but we took these stories in Ehud, Ehud, the two-edged sword, the left hand and the son of the right hand, and we connected this to the 2520. That is, it had to do with uh, the prophetic mirror, right? So it was rediscovered in 2005, we decided. 2520 yeah. um, so that that's when it was rediscovered mm -hmm. but I, I I can't place it with the with the uh, that first angels message arriving at that particular date it didn't really yeah. come in did it until a little later took time to figure it out mm-hmm Now, um, so there is a paper. So we know Johannes Koletsky, Johannes Koletsky um, published a paper in April of 2010. Um, Um, you know, so exactly, I mean, I know it's in April, April of 2010. He doesn't put an exact date on it. Um, I know the file I have probably doesn't show. I mean, it would show when it was made into a PDF. Um, so it wasn't made. The PDF that I have was created in 2016. That's when I got it. Um, I actually got originally, well, I might have actually the, uh, I have the original, yes, I have the Word document. <clears throat> um, now, when we say the 2520 arrives, we know that it's discovered and we're going to connect that with Newport. So, so Jeff says that it's seven years, right? Right. That's what he's going to, he's going to place that. So if you go in 2012, you'd say 2005. That would Which be is when we discovered, or we said it was uh, reintroduced or rediscovered. Right. Yeah. Now, I mean, it was rediscovered back long before that. In a sense, it was never uh, not discovered. People have been teaching the 2520 for a long time. In 1989, Peter Plum, he was presenting the 2520 to people because he had discovered it and used to be a part of this movement. So, um, I remember, <clears throat> excuse me, I remember sitting with Dwayne Dewey in 2015 and he was saying that <clears throat> he found it in 2000 he seen it on the chart like it just seemed to hit him all of a sudden and he called jeff about it. he said jeff do you know anything about about this 2520 why is it on the 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 chart we need to look more more into this <clears throat> excuse me <laughs> choking here mm -hmm. So the, the, yeah, I have a July 2nd that this document was created, but um, 
that was translated by Mark Engelman. Because it was originally, I used to have the, the German copy as well, but I lost it. Okay, so, um, so anyway, when we look at this, uh, you know, we got the 2010 date there. Now, there is a significance about that paper by Johannes Koletsky, and, and that is he presents the 2520 in a completely different way. That is, he's presenting the 2520 for northern Israel. Um, and um, so when we look at 2010, what we did with 2010 is we looked at Parminder studies, right? And that was the present delivered. So there's this, this present that's delivered. Um, but, but I think it's more than just Parminder studies. I actually think that Johannes Koletsky studies, I mean, it's Parminder studies as well on the 2520. But his studies present something that um, really becomes important later on. So when I'm at the Arkansas camp meeting in, uh, in uh, 2014, uh, I, I don't have Johannes Koletsky's studies, but because uh, that's not going to be until 2016 uh, that I get the studies. Um, but there is elements of the chronology that, that I had figured out that is in Johannes Koletsky's studies. So I had recognized um, uh, certain details that are in his studies. That is, um, he deals with dividing the 1260 into periods of 252 years. So he, he, he notices from 34 AD to 538 AD is 504 years, and that's two times 252. And that there's 1260 years that is five times 252. And that altogether it's seven times 252. So I figure this out in 2014. Though it's not going to be till 2016 that Stephen asked me to count backwards from 34 AD uh, to find out where we land. And I find out we land where uh, Jacob blesses his 12 sons. So we're going to come back to this tomorrow. We're going to try to figure out some of these dates in the meantime. And uh, any final thoughts? Is this is this useful going through this in this way again? Trying to get some more of the details. Yes, it is. More gems. Yes. Okay. Yes, it is. Okay. Well, let's close with prayer. Uh, dear Father in heaven, thank you for the studies today, this morning, and we pray that you can be with each one, that you can bless them in their activities of the day. Um, we pray for Jonah. We know that he needs work, and um, we ask that you can provide for him. And uh, thank you, Lord, for all the things you've been doing in our lives, and we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.